to submit their recommendations later this year. Our guest host is a member of the commission, also former Fed Vice Chairman Alice Rivlin, one of the members. She also served twice as director of OMB, and she joins us this morning from Washington. Alice, good to have you back. Good morning to you. Good morning. Glad to be here. Uh, we've been tossing this around uh, with Congressman Ryan all morning, and, and I'm sure you know it is, it is definitely bubbling up in terms of the level of concern among ordinary Americans. Your point is you got to cut the deficit but you just can't cut it yet. Is that fair? That's fair. Uh, but you can take steps now, very quickly, to cut the deficit in the future. Anything we do uh, to uh, cut the deficit is going to take some time, whether it's on the spending side or on the tax side. We don't want to derail the recovery right now. We need the government spending. We need to uh, extend unemployment compensation. We need to aid the states. But that's not what this commission is about. This commission is about the longer term deficit. Uh, as the economy recovers, we see a scary thing uh, looming at us. We're an aging population, and uh, we have high and rising medical care costs. Those costs are driving up uh, the uh, uh, federal spending over time inexorably uh, as the baby boom generation retires, and we all live longer, and we all want more medical care. So we have to figure out what to do. Uh, we don't necessarily have to cut those programs, but we have to cut something uh, in a major way to close the gap between spending and uh, revenues that's growing uh, as we look ahead. Right. The president used a term during the health care debate, and he, he always said, if not now, when? So um, I'll, ask, I'll pose that to you with relation to the economy. If not now, in terms of cutting the deficit, when? When will the economy be strong enough to do that? We don't know exactly, uh, but uh, the economy is recovering slowly, not as fast as anybody wants. Uh, we won't get back to any kind of uh, employment numbers that any of us would like to see uh, for several years. But we need to think now and act now on this longer run deficit. Uh, we don't need to do things like uh, raising taxes uh, right away or anything that uh, your small business people seem to be afraid we might do. Yeah. Uh, but if we uh, look uh, carefully at the future and say we're going to need to close this gap, we're going to need to do it partly on the spending side and partly on the tax side, let's do it sensibly in a pro-growth way. Uh, I think that's what this commission is about. Does that, Paul, does that sound to you like um, kicking the can down the road? Or is that, no. is that reasonable uh, well, prudence in terms of Alice treating? I don't agree on every detail, and some of that I agree with, some of it I don't. But Al, I got to tell you, Alice Rivlin and Erskine Bowles, those, they're my new favorite Democrats uh, because I think they're very reasonable, uh, very, uh, they're very reasonable with respect to how to tackle these things. And I think, Alice, you would agree with me. The key is this if we lock in real entitlement reform, which takes a while for the numbers to materialize, but if we lock in real long term fiscal discipline and entitlement reform, getting the debt paid off over time, that will help us with growth today in the present. So if we actually pass legislation that gets these entitlements taken care of in that we make them solvent, we'll help the economy now because we are going to add to the certainty that we're getting our fiscal house in order. We're not going down the path of Europe. We're actually getting you know, America back by making sure that our debt doesn't go off on a tear. I mean, we have, the CBO is telling us that the debt goes to 750% of gross domestic product before the end of the century. It's completely unsustainable. The modeling, the computer shuts down in something like 2027 because the, the CBO model can't measure the economy moving forward because the debt burden gets so bad. So, yes. Alice, we're you would agree a, with me on that, wouldn't you, Don? We're on a very <clears throat> dangerous uh, trajectory. I don't think you meant to suggest that all of the solution has to come from entitlement reform. That's got to be a big part of it, and that's a euphemism for uh, putting Social Security on a firm basis and slowing the rate of growth of uh, medical care costs. Uh, which will slow the rate of growth of Medicare and uh, Medicaid. But uh, we need to look at all the other kinds of spending in the budget, including defense, as Jan Schakowsky said in the last hour. Uh, but those uh, uh, things aren't growing as fast. It's the entitlements with the aging and uh, the health care increase that are driving the spending increase. That's right. So Alice, they're going to take a lot of uh, emphasis. D d are you taking any solace in the fact that the bond market appears to care very little about this problem right now? And is that giving us all a, a false sense of security? 
I think it is a false sense of security. I can't figure out the bond market. Either they don't understand what's going on That's or they don't believe. care. I don't know which I mean, is. the largest, most liquid market in the world, uh, uh, Congressman. You know, I, what's look. helping the bond market right now uh, uh, is that there's not much else uh, of a good place That's to put exactly your money. What, that's the point I was going to make. So you don't think it makes uh, the David Walkers of the world seem like we're, Cassandra's? We're, we're, it's, a, it's, a, it's a relativity point, which is we're the 98-pound weakling compared to 85-pound weaklings overseas. So we're sort of the haven in the storm right now, but I worry but you must, the credit markets can turn on right? us pretty fast. You'll take it. You'll sure, take that of course I'll take it, but, but it's, it's only temporary. This thing could turn on us pretty fast if we do not get our spending under control. Look, the, last year the GAO told us our unfunded liabilities were $62.9 trillion. This year, the $76 trillion unfunded liabilities. It just moved by that much in one year's time. And that's a conservative estimate about our unfunded yeah. liabilities. It's probably closer to $100 trillion of money that we're promising to people in this country that we don't have. So the, every year we keep kicking the can down the road, the worse it gets. And that's what's going to end up scaring the bond markets at the end of the day. But we're not as bad as everybody else right now. We're also the world's reserve currency. And so that's given us for know, some respite for now. Right. For now, right. Right. Um, Alice, we, we talked earlier about how to convince small business that the government is on the case. Do you think the commission is a legitimate step in that direction? I do. And it isn't just small business that needs convincing. It's uh, much of the American public and the world. A lot of the world holds our debt. They need to know that we're on the case. If we take serious steps to bring our longer run deficits under control, and we can do that, uh, then I think we will reassure not only small business in the United States, but our creditors around the world. Uh, unless the commission is yet another blue ribbon commission yeah. that, that Congress uh, sort of co-ops by extension to avoid making the tough decisions themselves, right? Well, that's absolutely right. Congress has to act and the American public has to tell Congress, we need you to act. They can't come down and say, ah, yes, we'd like the deficit less, but don't cut this and don't cut that and don't raise taxes uh, because we are not in favor of any of those things. Uh, unfortunately, you have to do all of those things to get this under control. Do you agree with the steps you've seen from uh, people like Governor Chris Christie in the state of New Jersey? I think the states are in a really bad bind, uh, and uh, many of them are uh, desperately uh, cutting uh, because their revenues have fallen off. They can't uh, do what the federal government can do, which is, uh, fortunately, uh, run a deficit in a big recession. Uh, so they are, uh, they are cutting, uh, and uh, cutting uh, quite deeply in many states which, um, for in the short run, uh, will make the recession worse. But in the situation like Illinois, where they've stopped paying their bills, what's the right scenario? To stop paying your bills and wait for the federal government to help out, or to go ahead and make some of those cuts yourself? Well, I think they're going to have to make cuts. You can't go on not paying your bills. Uh, that's a recipe for, uh, for disaster uh, and uh, for losing your bond rating and for going into uh, uh, some kind of state equivalent to bankruptcy. Uh, you, can't, uh, you can't do that. Uh, so uh, they will have to uh, cut. But I do think that the federal government should be helping the states more. Uh, th this is a moment in which the right thing for the federal government to do is to make sure that the cuts aren't deeper than necessary at the state level, mm -hmm. just because that makes the recession right. worse. Congressman Ryan off more people. doesn't mind that because he's cold and heartless and has, <laughs> and has no soul. Yeah, right. <laughs> we all know about Paul. That's right. Thanks. Appreciate that. Alice, thank you for your time. Uh, we all look for, we wish the commission the best of luck. We really do. I think that was the payback for the spineless comment. That was comment. the payback for the spineless comment, yeah. Yep. Okay, we're even now, right? <laughs> yes. We're going to have the congressman around for the rest of the show. Uh, when we come back, we'll talk about...